Hey folks, in this video we're going to take a dive into Google Meet and look at all of its features and all the things that you can do with it. So if you're in your inbox, and your inbox may not look exactly like this, but you'll have kind of on the left side your different folders, and then on the very left left side here this little row of different things that include your mail, your chat, and Meet. So let's take a click on Meet. So once you're here, you can do, you know, it tells you a couple different pieces of information, it tells you your meeting is safe, that is nobody from outside your organization can join your meeting unless you've invited or they, uh, they've been admitted by the host. This will show you any meets that you have coming up on the next day or so. And then you have, you can join a meeting. So if you click on that, it'll say, give us the code. This is very similar to say Zoom where you have the, the Zoom room number. In this case, it's a code. Uh, and then you also have a new meeting. So this would be if you're, you're just creating one on the fly, uh, you would very simply click new meeting. It would provide you with this information, which is really useful. It says, okay, if you want to, uh, this is great. Here's the link. So you can always copy that and send it. Uh, it also gives you the option to send it right away. So I can click on send invite and I can either copy the meeting invite or I can share via email. So that would pop up an email and I can populate who I want to send that to. So in this case, you know, I can put in the person's email address. Here's the relevant information and just hit send. I'm not going to do that because this is going to be just a meeting for uh, myself for right now. So I'm going to click new meeting. I'm going to uh, copy the link just so I have that in my clipboard. And now I am going to join now. And so before you enter the room, one of the things it's going to do is it's going to come to this screen. And this is very similar to, again, other video spaces. And it's going to, as you can see, it's me. Uh, and it's going to give you your video. It's going to check your audio. And you'll see that down here. You can adjust it down here. You can click on uh, your microphone and make sure it's drawing from the right places. And as you can see, the bar indicates that it is. You can click on the the audio so this is what you're hearing and figure out what device it's coming in and then a webcam if you happen to have more than one webcam you have an integrated and a plugged in one you can you know uh, oscillate between those also know if none of these are showing up you can always click often uh, in whether it's Chrome or it's uh, Firefox most browsers allow you to kind of click in this address bar area uh, whether it's the little lock icon the little shield icon uh, typically, it's it's this little icon, and it will have different settings. And ultimately, what you're going to want to allow to do is uh, allow the use of the microphone, allow the use of the camera. Uh, and the reason you want to do that is because Google Meets operates from the browser, and in order for the in order for your camera and your sound to be heard, you actually have to say the browser can use those things so that uh, you can be part of, you can have that video on so just keep that in mind again over here you have uh, you can have a couple other options that will be useful so if you want to join and use a phone for audio uh, some folks will do that for one reason or another or have a companion mode uh, those are other options you can also jump right into present but typically you're gonna just join now uh, so select join now and you'll pop into this screen so let's take a look at what we got here. All right, so we're in our Google Meet. Uh, notice over here, this is the Google Meet code uh, to access the room. Our name, we have the time. Uh, over our, if we hover our mouse over our face, we get the little, we got a couple different icons here. We get the pin. So if I want to pin my image here so that it's always on screen, I can do that. If I want to apply visual effects, and I will say visual effects for uh, for Google Meet are pretty expansive. So if I click on that over on the right hand side, uh, I've got these options of slight blur. So if I want to just slightly blur out the background or if I want to significantly blur out the background, I can do that. If I want to do a uh, visual style, so, you know, if I want to be, produce a warm and cozy feeling because it's the, the winter time that I'm recording this, sure. Uh, if I want to do something else, if I want to be, you know, have someplace more adventurous or intriguing uh, or sci-fi, 
So lots and lots of different options here. There's also styles, which I think is mostly just kind of like, the, yeah, this is the coloring uh, dynamic. So you actually get, you get some pretty cool options here to play around with. All right, for now, I'm just going to turn those off and go back to normal or as normal as I get. So I'm just going to X out of effects there. And again, I got there by clicking on here. There's also these three buttons here. And I have a couple other things I can do here. I can't remove this tile because it's the only tile. There's nothing to minimize because there's nobody else. Uh, reframe is an interesting option. So what reframe tries to do is keep you in the center um, of the... I think this is the reframe feature. Yep. So it tries to keep you center in uh, given your particular camera in where you're at. So if I was like this and I hit reframe, notice how it just moved over a little bit and it tries to recenter me. And so if I do this and I hit reframe, right? So, you know, it's one of those extra features that just might be helpful to note. All right. Down the bottom, we have some of our most classic, straightforward ways of using Google Meet. We have the microphone. So if I click this, then I am muting myself, and it tells me microphone is off. If I click the video, then it turns off my video. And notice now what it does is when I'm talking, it gives that little extra circle around. Um, that's great. I can turn video off. And I can turn on closed caption. And so when I turn on closed caption, it will, of course, tell me who is talking and will continue to uh, provide those captions as I go along. I'm going to leave these on for a little bit, just so you can get a sense of how those closed caption work. I think it gives you a reasonable uh, development of, of how they work and, and clarity. So I'm going to try to not let them distract me. All right. So you can also do reactions, again, very similar to other things. If you want to, you know, if somebody said something really funny and you just want to, like, give props to that or, like, something to get you thinking. Or uh, also if you want to change your skin tone. So um, if you want it to more represent what your skin tone looks like, that's great. If somebody says something that you want to celebrate, right? So it does all of those things that uh, we are fairly familiar with. All right. So... I'm going to hold off on the present now because there's lots of different options there. And I'm going to do the raised hand. So again, you kind of see over here on the left. Uh, there's also a feature. Uh, so you can always turn it off by clicking it off. There's also a feature that if you hold your hand, as you see right there, it's going to do it. Now that's a setting uh, that you can turn on. So it's not naturally on, but just know that you can actually uh, turn that on, and then if you want to raise your hand, you can actually just physically do it rather than clicking on the mouse, which, or clicking on the screen, depending on what you're working on, that may be the easier option. All right, this little item is, of course, leave call. We're not going to do that at this time. And uh, we're going to take a look at a couple of these options that we have going on here. So we have the whiteboard. And we'll take a look at that when we get into a different activity. Uh, we have manage recording. So one of the real cool things here is that with Google Meet, you can record. It'll save it to your uh, Google Drive. And this is something that because of our license at our institution, all of our faculty and students and staff have access to, which is really cool. Our students can actually, first of all, use Google Meet without any time restrictions or space restrictions, and they can record. So if they want to do presentations and things like that, uh, all those things are now available to them. So if we take a look at that, we can see here it provides, you have a couple different options before you actually start recording. Uh, the first thing is it's asking, do you actually want captions? Um, and you can choose captions in different languages. Uh, of course, the language are, it's, uh, the language will not, will not be a perfect translation from my understanding. Um, when you are moving, for, so if you are speaking English and is providing captions, say in French, um, there will definitely be things that need to be worked and improved. But uh, for English, say we want that. Uh, and also then, if you want to start a transcript, right? So you not only want the, the actual like captioning, but at the end of this to have a transcript of what was of what was said. That could be really useful if you're doing any kind of interviewing or if you want to like do something with what was said, turn it into a word cloud, do some kind of activity with it with your students. All right. So you click on that and then you just hit start recording. And 
it will say recording a meeting without consent of all participants may be illegal. So it's telling you, please don't do this without consent um, and that you should always check with them beforehand. So click start. And now it's actually doing that. And you can see up here, you're being told it's recording. You can be told, you can be seen that the call is being transcribed. And whenever you want, you can always stop that recording. I'm going to leave it right there for now. And then we're going to come over to, we're, we're taking a look, making our way through here. And now we're going to take a look at change layout. So this gives you several different options for how you would want to lay out your screen. So um, auto is it will just kind of adjust depending on how many tiles are around. Tiled will just be kind of that Brady Bunch method and you can actually adjust it. Like how many tiles do you want to see on the screen? Uh, you could put a maximum of 49, so it would be like 49 little squares, uh, assuming you have a group that that's big. Spotlight is um, whoever is speaking pops up, and then sidebar is, um, that's a good question, sidebar, well, let's leave it on sidebar and find out. All right, so I'm going to change that. And then again, we come back up here. If I want it to be full screen, so just kind of see nothing else. No, I don't want to see the browser or anything like that. I just want the visuals. I can do that. If I want to turn off captions or go back to visual effects, if I want to use phone for audio, I can come into all of those. And then a couple others of like, if I need to report a problem, report abuse, or if there's some troubleshooting that I need some help with. And then there's also settings. If I select settings. It's actually pretty uh, pretty clear. So the first thing it brings you to is audio. And again, it tells you, it's asking me if I want to stay in the call because it's just been me here by myself. So I'm going to say, yes, stay in the call. All right, so under microphone, uh, it is just telling me which microphone that it's pulling on. And if you notice this little action here, it's telling me uh, that like it's picking it up and you can tell because it keeps doing those little line things. You have a couple options. You can try noise cancellation to filter out sounds that uh, from the mic that isn't speech. This can be helpful and it also can be complicating because it's a it uses AI in a way that sometimes can be really helpful and sometimes depending on a variation of people's voices, how they speak, how they're reacting, you might not actually get all of what they're saying. Um, so just be aware that like it can be helpful, but I've seen it also hinder uh, the actual hearing that's going on. And then you got to do push to talk. That is, you're on mute unless you hold the space bar and then you can actually talk. So you can turn on either of those options if you want. You can also play around here with uh, which speaker or which sound system do you want the sound to be coming in from. And so I have two different options here for my system video. Once again, we have the integrated webcam um, or whichever webcam you want to designate. Adjusting lighting. So this is something you can do where I like I'm I'm often in a place where visually it seems like my room is finely lit, but for some reason on the camera it looks kind of dark. And so I can turn this on and it looks a little brighter. So if I turn it off, notice how in this you might not be able to see because it might be really small, but my it, it just became a little bit darker. Actually, if I go back to the settings, let's see here. Can I move this? Nope, I can't. All right, so I'm going to uh, go back to video, and I am just going to turn that back on. And then it just it has a couple other items here. Um, so we had done the uh, video lighting, and then framing. This was the thing I was talking about before, where it can reframe. So I can also turn this off and it's just going to keep me as is. I will be able to do that reframing piece. The resolution is just how, how high you want that resolution, how quality of a picture. And you may, it, it will often default to auto based upon what your available, depending on what your bandwidth is. So it can kind of adjust accordingly um, because the higher the resolution, that you know that you send and so the resolution that you send is your visual image going out there and the resolution resolution that you receive is what you're getting from other people uh, i would often leave these on auto so that your browser can decide based on what your bandwidth is jumping over to general uh, you have a couple other things here just that we we've already started to see or talk about 
leaving empty calls. So uh, Google Meet will automatically remove you or will ask to remove you after a few minutes if there's nobody else that joins the call. I'm actually going to turn that off because I'm often in here doing other stuff like this kind of video. Um, but you might just have that on default because you're just, you won't necessarily, you may forget or just um, will be left on in the background. Raising your hand automatically. So this is the feature I was talking about where if I raise my hand, it will register that I raised my hand. So I'm going to leave that on. I like that. Captions. This tell. This is the like. What's the default language of the meeting? Uh, is there trans? Do I want translated captions? If so, which language do I want? And then I can change it to that. Uh, and then reactions. Again, a couple things that we've already seen. Sh uh, show show reactions from others, so I can see when reactions happen from other people. Reactions move on the screen. We saw that. And then sound can accompany reactions. For me, I can find that a little distracting, so I tend to have that off. All right, so those are a lot of settings. Uh, just know you can go in, play around, explore those. And then we're gonna move over to this right side, these couple options here. So the first is the meeting details. And if I come in here, this is where I've got like more phone, like if I want to send that, that want somebody to join the call, I can provide them that information and copy that. Here is where I can actually see who's in attendance. I'm actually going to add somebody. Technically, it's myself. Uh, I'm going to invite them into this so that uh, we can see what it looks like to have another person in this call. So that's what you would do is if you had somebody else you wanted to come in, or if it was a couple of you and then you wanted to send somebody out an invite, you can just hit add people. Here, you can also mute all. And I think we're gonna, I'm gonna pause right now so I can get uh, the, my other version in here and we can take a look at what happens when you have other people and what are some of the changes with that. All right, so now we are going to be joined by, uh, as I said, myself, uh, but this will be just an account that we can have another person. So once that other person shows up, now we have their icon is there and it would flip back and forth, it tells us who that person was. So it was Lance Eaton from Outside College Unbound. Um, and over here on the right, you can see, again, that person comes in, the microphone is crossed off, that means they're on mute. Uh, if I click on the other actions, I can pin them to screen, I can pair our tiles together, which would make more sense if we had more folks here. Um, I can also turn on the don't watch, right? So if I don't want to see this particular uh, person, I can turn them off. Uh, I can add them as co-host, and this will be really important, particularly once you get, um, once you have people in there and if you're looking for them to uh, present or be also able to help out, this would definitely be the, the feature you want to use. And then you could just make them a viewer, so this kind of reduces their role. Um, and then you can also just remove them from the call, right? So those are your options there, and that was under... Uh, show everyone. Of course, if I close that, we're back to this. Um, and even as I hover over them, once again, I can pin them. And I have some of those similar options that I mentioned before. I have don't watch and I have removed from the call. Um, and I just want to note kind of up here, it tells you, these icons tell you a couple different things. The little, this little icon tells you, oh, there's people from outside your organization. This one tells us it's recording. This one tells us it's being transcribed. So again, lots of little places for information. Over on the right here, we have the caption setting for English. All this is great. Now, we also have the chat feature. And again, you get, as the host, you get the option here of let everyone send messages. If you turn that off, then only you can send messages. Uh, one drawback with Google Meet is unfortunately you can't send private messages. So in other platforms, you can send private messages from one person to another. That unfortunately isn't a feature as of yet in Google Meet. I don't know if it will become one. And then we get over to a couple other last options that are really valuable. We get to the activities. And so when we get to the activities, we see some of the things that people are most familiar with. We've got breakout rooms. I really like breakout rooms in Google Meet. They are so much easier and clearer. So if I want to do, set up a breakout room, I click split uh, into breakout room. And then I can set up breakout rooms and it will ask me how many rooms, right? So how many rooms do I want? And then do I want a timer? Well, yeah, I actually, um, I want this to be 
15 minutes. Okay. So there's a timer and I can choose to shuffle and I can choose to clear. I can choose to reset this. And so I can decide if I had a longer list of folks, it would have already broken them out. And I can also just kind of move people around. So I can move uh, this version uh, over to different rooms and notice it will tell me, oh, okay, here's, here's where those are. So I can also like close out rooms, really pretty easy to, to move things around. So I'm going to open rooms and that person is going to join that breakout room. And so here I am, but maybe I want to go and join that breakout room, right? So I'm in the main room and I can see that right here because it says main call and here I am. And breakout room three is where that other version of me is. So if I go and join, it tells me I'm joining breakout room three. This is what it would look like for, for other folks is once they join the breakout room, you may take a second to get there. There we go. So we're in the space. And we are now able to just hang out here and have our our time together. Um, if, oh, here we go. It's right up here. Uh, it tells you you're in breakout room three. It tells you it's ending in 15 minutes. So again, it's a nice clear sense of what is going on and um, just being just being aware that that uh, have that information clear and readily available. All right, so I'm going to go back here into breakout rooms and I'm actually just going to close the breakout rooms. And it's saying everybody will be returned to breakout rooms or I can just you know, or everybody will be returned to breakout rooms after 30 seconds. And so that would be us, but I'm actually going to just move myself back into the main breakout room. So that is the breakout rooms. Again, if I wanted, if I needed to do it again, I could always set up breakout rooms. Um, I could clear this and that would just kind of reset everything. I could redesign the rooms. And the other thing I didn't mention is, of course, I can name them, right? So I could name them differently than just breakout room one, two, and three. All right, so that's breakout rooms. There's other options in here that are worth highlighting. So we have breakout rooms. If you want to do a quick poll, you can always click on that, start the poll, type in your question, you know, true or, true or false. That's just the question. So it's either true or it's false. And you can have responses appear without names. So if you want it anonymous, and then you can hit launch. And so you're going to sit and wait to see what people answer. And when somebody submits a vote, they will submit the vote and you can see oh, how many people voted. Okay. This looks, this is interesting. And you can end the poll. When you end the poll, uh, what you, I'm just trying to see here if there, there usually is, it was right there in front of me, the option to show everyone results. And so once I select that, uh, folks will be able to see the results within, uh, the Google meet itself. So there you are, you have show results. Folks will be able to see who voted, true, how many voted true, how many voted false. Um, and you can create another poll. Um, the other thing to note is that you can create, when you create the poll, again, if you have additional answers for them to select, and you can either launch it or save it. So you can always preload the polls in a given Google Meet and be ready to kind of use them throughout the, uh, throughout the session. All right. So that is polls. Uh, a couple of other options. We obviously, we talked about recording, transcripts. Um, whiteboarding. So if you want to uh, do a whiteboard, you actually can create the whiteboard. Use it right now. It's currently using Jamboards. That may not uh, that may not last beyond the next year because Jamboards are set to be retired from Google. But the first thing it's going to ask you is saying, "Oh, there's people here. 
uh, that may not have access. And so do you want to allow them to be a viewer or do you want to allow them to be an editor? If this is a group activity, you obviously want folks to be uh, editors. So select continue. It says person for outside organization. We understand that. And so when this happens, you will sometimes get this, uh, you'll get this comment that says, oh, uh, we've done a, it's doing something, it's creating a pop-up window. Uh, that is it's sending folks to the Jamboard. So typically you're gonna want to show the Jamboard. And so now it has been popped out there. For folks that are in the call, what they will get is in the chat, a link to the Jamboard that they can join. So what you'll see right now is uh, that that other Lance has joined because that link was put into the chat. And so there's two of us and we can all you know do whatever we want on the Jamboard. The other cool thing that you notice is I started from a, a new whiteboard, but if I had already created one, I had a predetermined one that I wanted folks to uh, go in and play around with, I could ch choose from Drive and identify the whiteboard that way. Um, so those are the major things there. You can always click on um, and see what are some of the useful add-ons that might be helpful here. Uh, we won't get into too much of that right now. There's some additional third-party apps that you can start to explore, but we're just kind of covering the main things here. Um, and then the last one is host controls. And for this one, uh, it's really just kind of the main features as the host that you want to be aware of, host management. So this allows you to have that power to choose who does what and appoint um, co-hosts and all of those things. Right off the bat, uh, in Google Meets, it uses the environment it, it uses the user information to determine the level of trust in the environment. So what does that mean? That means that if somebody is coming in through their College Unbound email, they're going to have certain levels of trust that they can already do certain things. They can already potentially share their screens and send chat messages and send reactions. Um, Google does that because it it's recognizing that, hey, there's a bunch of different people that are from the same domain to which our account is with. And so we, we feel reasonably safe about letting them have access. It's more hesitant when it's from people from outside your organization. That's why we have this little icon right here. All right, so that makes sense. You can have that information and you can toggle those back. Maybe you don't want people to be able to share their screen. Um, I find nowadays people don't accidentally share screens that often. Uh, anything else down here? meeting access so you can have, again, if this is your class, you can adjust these options as makes sense. So uh, you can have it set up so that the host has to join before anybody else can. Uh, but if this is a class, something you're meet, meeting weekly, you might just have it open and folks come in a few minutes early than you, then folks come in a few minutes early than you. You can adjust that meeting access type that I was talking about. So it defaults to trusted, but you can have it open. So it could be to anybody that has the link or you can have it to restrict it, only those people that you invite. I do think it's it's ideal and makes sense for Trusted, uh, but in, and I think we'll still have students that will be coming in through outside accounts because they may be logging in through their phone or through other devices. And so I would say typically do trust and keep an awareness that you may have students joining that aren't from their CU accounts. Then you've got a couple other options. There's a Q&A feature, and so you can kind of play around with those a little bit. But now let's actually talk about the share screen option. So share screen is largely very similar to other video conferencing tools. Uh, you have this little square with an arrow, and you want to click on it. And when it does that, it's typically going to show up in your browser and say, OK, what do you want to share? And just before you even do this, there's a couple things to note. You know, the first is it says, do you want to mute website notifications while sharing? Um, that can be a really good option if you have other notifications that are likely to, to bounce up. Then you also now need to identify which window or screen. So what do I mean by window or screen? If I take a look, I have here screen one, screen two, and then several other things that seem somewhat unfamiliar. So screen one and screen two, I happen to be in a situation where I'm working with two monitors 
And so it's saying, like, do you want to share what's on screen one or do you want to share what's on screen two? Meet, that is the Google Meet that we are looking at now. So it's asking, do you want to share this version of uh, Firefox? So I have this version that is open. It's saying, do you want to share this version of Mozilla Firefox, which is a, another set of tabs that I have open on the other screen. And then it's saying, do you want to share Screencast-O-Matic, which is the tool I'm using to record this. So obviously a couple different choices here um, that may or may not make sense, depending upon your familiarity of like what you have open on your computer. Uh, typically, the best way to know is looking at the bottom of your screen to see what are the different things you have open. So you might have Chrome, you might have Firefox, you might have a Word document. Um, you'll probably see different versions of that. I'm actually going to just do screen two um, because that will kind of cover everything that's on this page and then I can just drag things up and over. And see, it gives me a preview. It says, okay, you want to share screen two? This is what sh screen two looks like. Do I want to allow or not now? Or do I want to always block? I'm going to say allow. And it'll tell me you're going to start sharing. And it says can't share because uh, an error has occurred. Well, that's fun. And yet it's, hmm, let's see. Oh, Firefox is preventing this. I'm going to allow it. Let's try that share screen again. This sometimes happens is trying to select the right thing. All right. There we go. So this is where it's going to get a little, little funky. Um, as you can see, there's this kind of, as it says, sharing your entire screen or browser window can cause an infinite uh, infinity mirror. So what you're seeing right now is I'm sharing the screen on which I'm working, which therefore is sharing the screen upon it, which it is working and it's just kind of circling it. But this is how it will, it will look, except what is here might be something that um, is different. In fact, I'm gonna turn off the transcription right now and I am going to stop sharing and share a different screen just so it doesn't look that chaotic and you get a clearer sense of things. So I'm going to actually share my screen one. This is what my, sh my screen one looks like. And I'm going to allow. And so now you can see this is what students, will, this is what your, your participants will see. Um, it won't be grayed out. It's grayed out on mine because I'm actually looking at the real thing. Um, and so here it is, I can, you know, do what I need to, if I want to go to a site, if I want to pull up a visual, an image, or if I want to open up a doc or do a slide deck, right? I can go to, uh, I go to slides.new, that will actually kick me into a brand new slide. And once I'm here, there's nothing really here, but I'm going to just pretend I'm doing a presentation and just put some jumbled words in there and I am going to just get into slideshow mode so it'll take a second because there's lots of things going on, on my computer between uh, doing the zoom uh, sorry doing the Google meet and also doing a recording of this but see now I'm in presentation mode uh, I could move forward through the slides this is the one and only slide though so if I did, we will do a new one. All right, and here we go once again. I'm giving this amazing presentation. Look at these these amazing words. Ta-da! So this is how you would use that share screen. Um, we're still figuring out some of the details on this. There might be some issues we're finding around sharing of audio, but we will have more support materials up and around that. So that is the comprehensive exploration of this tool. Uh, we're gonna have shorter videos that help out with like a lot of the things we just covered, but kind of to get everything all around at once. Um, this is the video that does that. So hopefully this is useful. If you have questions, let me know.